Hi, I'm Amadeus Regisera, composer and artistic production director for the San Francisco Contemporary Music Players. Today I'll be guiding you through an in-depth look at Homogenous Infiltration, a piece by the extraordinary composer, improviser, and pianist Myra Melford. We'll pay special attention to the development of the work and the exciting and unusual process we undertook as an ensemble to prepare the piece, from workshops to rehearsals and finally the performance. In this exploration, I'll be joined by SFCNP oboist Kyle Bruckman, a fantastic improviser and composer in his own right. I'm Kyle Bruckman, one of the oboists with the San Francisco Contemporary Music Players. A lot of my work as a musician is tied up with not just being a, a performer and an interpreter of compositions by others, but being a composer myself and an improviser, and I identify very strongly with a composer-performer paradigm. Myra Melford's improvisational background finds its roots in a plurality of musical styles, from blues and boogie-woogie to the European avant-garde, from jazz to folk traditions and the American experimentalist tradition. And with her deep love for poetry, visual art, architecture, and spiritual practice, all of these things come together to create a sound world that is just as varied and provocative. Her music can be simple, sparse, lyrical and spacious, but also jagged, aggressive, polytonal, and texturally complex. From her study and collaborations with composer improvisers such as Henry Threadgill, Leroy Jenkins, Butch Morris, and Joseph Jarman, to her own projects such as Trio M, Tiger Trio, Be Bread, her duo with clarinetist Ben Goldberg, and most recently, Snowy Egret. I think it's fair to say that Myra and I share a sense of very deep indebtedness to what's sometimes called the creative music continuum. And this is a mode of music making that uh, contains all sorts of things in its DNA. It's indebted to free jazz, it's indebted to uh, European post-war avant-garde, it's indebted to American experimentalism in the form of the New York School, et cetera, et cetera. But it's much more than that, and it really traces its roots back to the mid-60s with the foundation of something called the AACM, the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians. And this group was and remains still active to this day. It's a grassroots, communitarian-minded organization that is, was about... African-American musicians on the south side of Chicago banding together and saying, essentially, we're sick of being told that our music is entertainment and that the white folks' music is high art. The scholar and composer, improviser, uh, electronic music innovator, instrumentalist George Lewis uh, in his scholarly writing refers to what he talks about as a distinction between a, a, an Afrological and a Urological mindset in music making. And to me, this is really kind of the heart of the matter. It's a valuing, a celebrating of music that isn't necessarily beholden to the score. Uh, the, the notation serves a purpose, but the notation is a means to an end rather than the end unto itself. It's very different from kind of the, the Western classical model, the idea that you know the score is some sort of platonic ideal that floats in midair that uh, interpreters are supposed to attempt to realize but will never actually get there. A word that might be a useful way into Melford's musical approach is organic. Two pivotal figures in her artistic development employed the term to describe the ways in which material and practices grow naturally and with a certain degree of harmony between their individual parts. The first comes from one of Melford's teachers, Henry Threadgill. His conception of organic composition in which a whole composition, including its structure, starts from a small musical cell or phrase and grows naturally through an infinite number of permutations is something that Melford employs in homogeneous infiltration. However, in this piece, that generative idea was not a musical phrase, but the sound of the piano itself. Through a series of electronic analysis, processing, and manipulation, 
Melford used the sound of various inside the piano playing techniques as the basis for the piece's melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic material. Moreover, to each technique, Melford gave evocative or descriptive names like brush sticks or little creatures, which she then used as a formal structure. Each technique became a distinct sonic environment in which the performers were invited to shape through their playing and improvisation. This approach speaks to the deep influence of architect Frank Lloyd Wright on Melford's compositional methods. Wright practiced what he called organic architecture, in which a design was not imposed, but created in response to function, situation, materials, and in concert with the site. He once wrote, In music, the romanza is only a free form or freedom to make one's own form. A musician's sense of proportion is all that governs them in it. The mysterious remains just enough a haunting quality in a whole, so organic as to lose all tangible evidence of how it was made, and the organic whole lives in the harmonies of feelings expressed in sound. In homogenous infiltration, the performers are working within a form, and in a way without one, letting their own sense of intuition and proportion guide the shape and duration of the music. Of course, Melford offers her directive and her intention, but in the process, she steps back, allowing the ensemble members to assert and articulate themselves as well. SFCP has historically been a music ensemble that performs traditionally notated music. So the process for developing homogenous infiltration was a departure from the way that the ensemble typically prepared a piece. And for a composer like Melford, whose background was not in the written tradition of Western classical music, there were several dilemmas. The first was, what would the music actually sound like? And how would she invite the performers to improvise? And since the performers were reading off the page, what would the notation look like? Another dilemma was, what was the role of the conductor? And how would he keep the ensemble together while shaping the performance? And finally, how would Melford decide how long a section or musical idea should last? And as most often the case with improvisers, Melford's process began with the musicians themselves. The process of developing the piece was honestly my favorite kind of collaboration. And this is something that is uh, not so much about orchestration that's based on instrumentation, but that's based on people. It's based on individual personalities. Uh, orchestration as more of a social experiment and as a, a social construct. So when we had our one-on-one -on -one workshop sessions, really what it was about was uh, a, a lot of it was by were saying, hey, what do you do? What do you enjoy doing on your oboe? What are cool sounds that you make? And this is far more than a question of just like, okay, here, here's my bag of tricks. Here are the things that, the, the kind of cliche licks that I have developed as, as a performer and as an improviser. It's really, it's, it's about bringing in the individual and really honoring the embodied individual voices of all the players. So I would show her uh, aspects of my improvising vocabulary, basically a musical language that I've developed over decades, and she would stop and say, that one, I like that one. How the heck would I write that? How should I write that down so that you can reproduce that? And we laughed and I kind of shrugged and it's like, well, what makes sense to you? You know, the question really becomes at that stage, is it just to remind me? Is it a mnemonic that says, go do that thing you do? In which case it could be represented visually any way you want. Or is this something that you envision other players, you know, a, could, could, could any other oboist uh, approach this and come up with similar results? And I think, again, at the risk of putting words in her mouth, I think a big part of her interest is is in precisely the, the fact that the piece is going to be about the people playing it each and every time it's performed. After meeting with all of the ensemble members, Melford took their sounds and playing techniques and began to compose. 
with the help of some of her current and former students, including myself, as well as UC Berkeley's Center for New Music and Audio Technologies, or SINMAT, she translated those sounds and techniques into written notation and created dozens of orchestrational and structural mock-ups. Melford then used these mock-ups in a series of workshops with SFCMP and artistic director Eric Dudley in order to hear different combinations of sounds, textures, and instruments. These workshops, something SFCMP has never done with a composer, also allowed Melford and the ensemble to try out different durations allowing the piece's structure to breathe. Without a strictly prescribed sense of duration, the players, guided by Eric, could develop their own musical intuition and improvisational timing organically as a group. My own relationship with Myra goes back to being a graduate student composer at UC Berkeley and taking her class entitled Improvisation for Composers, which had an interesting conceit. She took the inherent musicality of each student, regardless of improvisational experience, and drew that out in performance, challenging us to find different standard and non-standard ways to notate what we were doing. What I didn't know then was that I would be using the same skills and questions Myra had taught us to help her develop the written score for homogenous infiltration nearly 10 years later. After she had time to process and metabolize the results from the workshops with SFCMP, uh, composing and reworking sketches and musical ideas, I began to help Myra collate these copious pages into a score that would not only reflect the work that had been accomplished in the workshops by the performers and notate it in a relatively fixed way, but would also be a mutable and changeable map for the inevitable adjustments that would happen in rehearsals and even the performance. And with any map, it only shows the way from A to B and the magic of any journey is the excitement and uncertainty that comes in between. I really want the input and uh, the creativity and the ideas of the individual players to come into it. At the same time, I want to maintain a certain uh, control maybe over the big picture and, and uh, the kinds of materials. But um, I like that, uh, and I also am really interested in this idea that, you know, this idea of having some ambiguity in a piece or in, in the title of a piece or uh, so that so that it can mean different things to different people, but we can all experience it together. With the idea of organic in mind, it's clear that Myra Melford's entire approach to the creation of homogenous infiltration with SFCMP reflected a deeply collaborative environment in all aspects of the process. One which grew from the circumstances of the project itself, as well as from the collective musical identity of SFCMP. It is a true testament to Myra's inclusive and all-embracing approach to music making that allowed for such a special project to come alive. And it truly is a milestone in SFCMP's history, an example of the ensemble's dedication to all forms of new music. I'm seeing more and more younger musicians who believe in contemporary music, who consider themselves new, new music specialists, coming out of conservatories, walking into the field, walking into uh, a career with more and more of an awareness and appreciation for and a robust level uh, degree of experience with improvising as something that is a part of 21st century musicianship. The point is using this as a locus for greater representation, for bringing to life voices that have been historically excluded from the conversation. And what's key, of course, is to move far beyond representation into equity and inclusion. And the more adept we become as individual players, as an ensemble, as an organization, and as a field, at bringing to life a multiplicity of voices that actually reflects who we are, the more we get to continue to matter. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the performance of Homogenous Infiltration, 
for Improvising Pianist and Ensemble, performed by Myra Melford and the San Francisco Contemporary Music Players.
Thank you.